I bought a motorhome. This is a 1978 GMC motorhome. It occurs to me that you guys probably don't know what makes this motorhome so special. To explain that, I need to talk about rear wheel drive. Because of mechanical considerations, the vast majority of trucks are built like this with the engine up front, but they are rear wheel drive. This means that you need a drive shaft uh, that transverses the entire wheelbase. When you want to build a frame on top of your wheels, you have to build it above the drive shaft. So this is the way that truck chassis are constructed. To this day, motorhomes, also known as RVs, are built on top of truck chassis, which are purchased from major automobile manufacturers. A motorhome is basically a box built on top of this frame. So you can see why motorhomes sit so high up off the ground. Also, with the solid rear truck axle, they ride like a 2x4 on a golf ball. Now, back in the early 1970s, GMC decided to design an RV from scratch. They put together an all-star team of engineers from the Cadillac line, along with designers from the Corvette line, and for good measure, they threw in an aircraft engineer or two. The major driving principle behind this project was to make a front-wheel drive motorhome. The lack of a drive shaft meant that they could lower the frame way down, which brought the center of gravity down as well, making the rig handle much better than a normal RV. Then they got the brilliant idea to put the tandem rear wheels front to back instead of the typical side-by-side -side arrangement. This allowed each rear wheel to be independently suspended, like this. The resulting ride of the vehicle is much nicer, but this arrangement also gives more distance in between the wheels, which translates as more living space inside the RV. Speaking of living space, it's not a box, it's a tube like a passenger jet with all aluminum and fiberglass construction for massive weight savings and increased aerodynamics. They made these things from 1973 to 1978. That's it. A few other smaller companies copied the concept, like Revcon and Airstream, but they just weren't as elegant because, to this day, GMC is the only major auto manufacturer to put all of their efforts into making the best RV possible from the ground up. Unless Tesla starts making RVs, we aren't going to see a new motorhome which is anything close to being this cool anytime soon. So now you can understand why I bought one. It may look like a motorhome, but it's more like a luxury muscle car from the heyday of Detroit. This guy even raced one on the Bonneville Salt Flats. Anyway, let's get back to the tour. This is a 1978 GMC motorhome in the um, Palm Beach trim. You can see the vinyl uh, striping is probably the worst of it on the outside. In fact, this corner is the worst of it. I don't know why the paint's been chipped off here. And also they hit uh, this aftermarket turn signal thing and sort of damaged it right there. So, giving you a tour down the side here. Behind there is just a plug, like a 120 volt plug. So if you're sitting out here in the open when you're camped and you want to plug something in. Um, under here is the propane tank. Whoa. Yep, around back. We've got the ladder to access the roof, as well as my spare tire with this, you know, $15 spare tire cover. Let's go up there. There's my AC unit with the uh, damaged fairing on it. Might get a new unit, I don't know about that. Uh, over here, you can see a small dent right there. Uh, and I think that the place where the fiberglass cap meets the aluminum is uh has been sort of damaged and that's it's a leak there's a leak there you can see somebody tried to repair this with silicone at some point but it didn't work it's still leaking we get a lot of rain here in the northwest and that definitely noticed uh water coming in we've got this other compartment which has the onan generator so cool that's um supposed to be a pretty quiet generator it runs at lower rpm than your, uh, than your typical Honda generator these days. So the, the lower RPM means less noise. Here is the um, water. I believe that's where you just, you know, your fresh water for inside the motorhome. You can see I've been trying to um, fix the striping. I'm removing the striping. It is a pain in the butt. This is 40 year old, you know, vinyl sticker. And it's, it just, it's terrible. It's so hard to get off, so. Over here we have another access panel to the plug, which gets you power if you're camped in a campground, and also some more water, I guess. Uh, I don't know what goes in there. Now the great thing about these old motorhomes, these, uh, these GMCs, is the air ride. Super comfortable suspension, and it's adjustable, so when you get to where you're going, you can uh, raise and lower it and level out the motorhome. I added the, um, what are those, the hubcaps or the wheel covers, whatever you want to call them, 
There's uh, the vents for the heater. Yes, it's got heater and AC inside there. You're living in luxury with one of these things. And here is where you fill it up with gas. And it just takes regular, you know, cheap pump gas, <laughs> as would be expected from, a, from an old school engine. Taking a look at that engine, by the way. There's some of the access to it. This is kind of the fluids and whatnot. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go take a look at this thing from the inside. Up here we have the cockpit area. This steering wheel it just has much better visibility. You can see the old steering wheel here. Uh, yeah, it wasn't good. See how much it blocked? You just couldn't see your gauges. And I just think it was so ugly. By the way, these are all Cadillac components. That steering wheel, if you look at old Cadillacs, it's exactly where that comes from. So there's my dashboard. You're gonna have to replace this stereo. Um, there's a little bit of peeling right here. Don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I might just um, upholster, cover that whole dash. Um, I don't know. But up here you can see this crack. That's where it's currently leaking in at the front. So yeah, that's the cockpit. Now one other interesting thing, these seats, and they are, they are sticky because they are so old, but you can see the, um, yeah, that needs some lubrication, but you can see how the, uh, the captain's chair armrest comes up. And it's pretty comfortable, but you know, it only has a lap belt, so not very safe. Speaking of seats that are likely to get replaced, these, um, that's gonna get removed and I'm gonna have to figure out something else to go there. Um, here is the, the galley, as they would call it on a ship. So ship, so they got the sink. Stove, I gotta check and see if it works. Kind of rusty. Must have had some weather. You can see all that sort of damage back in there. So probably what I'm gonna have to do is um, gut the whole interior and patch those leaks and then put everything back in all cleaned up. The carpet's gotta go. Um, I'm gonna put some hardwood flooring in there, um, but yeah. Isn't it kind of cool you step up into the, uh, into the cockpit area? I really like that detail. This is the, um, that's the, the, the bunk bed slash sofa. Let me, uh, let me set the camera down here and put that thing into a bunk bed. Yeah, so there you go. You have the lower bed, and then you have the upper bunk, and these are just seatbelt straps that hook in up here at the top. So it's pretty easy to get it put into bunk bed mode. Um, that'll be nice for the kid. If we have another kid, we can have them both sleep there. Just got to figure out what to do here. I would love to put a table, like a dining room table or something like that. But then where do the kids ride when we're actually rolling down the road? So speaking of dining tables, that's what you find back here. Um, but this is just really narrow. I mean, look at that. That's the width of my hand. And that's how you're supposed to squeeze in there. Now you can kind of tilt the table to the side, but once you're in there, you're stuck. So um, it's not ideal. Now what happens is that this table, the table goes away and this thing becomes the like queen size master bed. Let me put the camera down again and make that happen. All right, there it is in all of its 1970s glory. The, uh, the queen size bed here in the back. Now you can see there used to be some cabinetry up there. Uh, there's a lot of water damage. There's quite a bit of leaking. I got some cracks in my end cap here, so I got to replace that. Lots of leaking damage back there. So yeah, we got some reupholstering to do, some leaks to patch, and yeah, that's the, that's the major living area. We have just a closet here. I won't even bother to open that. Just got some storage for like your clothes. Those are drawers, more storage. Down there in the bottom is some mechanicals. That's the, uh, the pump for leveling the vehicle. And in here is the bathroom. <laughs> there's, the, uh, there's the toilet and it's, it's got a full on you know, toilet system. There's the wet bath. So yeah, it's, the kinda, it's not a composting toil toilet. I'd kinda like to remove that because, I mean, emptying these kinds of toilets with the, with the black water and, or whatever you want, the solids, it's just, it's absolutely disgusting. So, okay, nice sink. Nice, this is actually in decent shape. Now, a lot of people hate these kinds of wet baths, but it's such a pain in the butt to remove it. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just gonna leave it the way that it is. 
the idea is just to get this on the road with the least amount of effort, you know, to where it's livable and we're all happy. You know, my wife's happy and I'm happy uh, having fun camping. This is going to be a desert camping rig. That's the idea. Escape from the uh, escape from the elements or escape from the city and go go out into the middle of nowhere and just enjoy some time by ourselves. So that uh, that refrigerator is probably going to go. I'm going to have to replace that. So yeah, probably got another ten thousand dollars to put it into this thing. And quite a bit of work as far as the ceiling or, you know, getting the leaks patched and getting all the old grodiness sort of cleaned out of there. Um, might replace the AC unit and, you know, look, just look at all these things 40 years old, you know, you're going to have, you're having issues. Um, some of the switches here, you've got a porch light, you've got a floor light, that's right there. That's not coming on, but anyway, there's a, there's a light down there at the floorboard. And then there's a galley light. There used to be a central vacuum cleaner. This used to be where all of the, the hoses for the central vacuum cleaner were stored. And that's where you would plug in the hoses. It's silly, but they did central vacuuming. I still have the vacuum unit under the refrigerator there. That's obviously going to get removed. Really don't need that. So yeah, this is the only door to the whole thing, uh, to the whole motorhome, which is interesting. Yeah, lots of work. Should be a whole lot of fun for me and my family. Uh, you know, maybe I bit off more than I can chew. I don't, I don't think this is going to be a quick project, but should be fun. Uh, my dad's going to come help me. This has kind of been, he's, he's built a few motorhomes himself, so he'll be a, a lot of help for me. All right, let's take a look at one last thing, and that is the awning. There it is. That's the awning. Uh, you can see it's very much original, super Super 70s. This is what she currently looks like. You can see uh, I've torn out all the carpet, torn out most of the furniture. This is the uh, water tank from the back. I'll show you where that came out of here in just a second. There's the jack. So the sofa is going back in, but that's the only bit of original furniture that we're going to keep. But I had to do a little bit of funky uh, wiring in there. You can see that little bit of uh, 3D printing, that green thing down in there. And that was just to get the uh, the horn to work, just to get it to all sit in there in place. So it wasn't too difficult for me because I have a 3D printer. Um, I'll show you more 3D printing here in a second, but yeah, lots of work to do up here. I'm going to uh, use some vinyl paint to uh, change the color of the dashboard. Um, and yeah, we were playing with the curtains. They've got to go. You can see all the stains. These uh, front chairs, I've ordered new chairs on eBay. I read on the internet that the Honda Odyssey seats are a great replacement for the uh, stock bucket seats in the GMC motorhome. And so I went looking on Craigslist here in the Portland area, which is close to where I live, and found this 1994 to 1998 set of bucket seats for $80, which is a really good price, but these aren't going to work for me. They only have a single armrest and there's still no shoulder strap, which is kind of the whole point in the Honda Odyssey seats. They apparently have a built-in shoulder strap. So I did a little more research and I found that the model years 2018 and 2019, the center row seats have a shoulder strap. So you can see here on the Copart website, I found an entire Honda Odyssey for sale that's been crunched in the back. And this is what the center row seats look like. You can see they have two armrests and it's hard to tell from this photo, but they do have an integrated uh, shoulder belt. So that's exactly what I want. And I don't want to buy the whole car, right? That's probably going to sell for $20,000, uh, even in this crashed condition. Uh, so not just going to buy the whole car just to get the seats. So I called the junkyards, all the junkyards in the whole area from Portland to Seattle and not a single junkyard had a Honda Odyssey from 2018 or 2019. Um, a lot of them said they'd never even had one ever uh, yet. So these are going to get more common in the coming years, but right now they're just too new to be finding them in junkyards. Um, so I didn't know what I was going to do uh, until a pair of them popped up on eBay. So I got lucky and I bought these, I uh, bought the left and the right here. You can see they have um, a shoulder belt built in and the left and right armrest. And uh, yeah, I got two of these for a thousand bucks. So kind of expensive, but they are uh, much nicer than the seats which are currently in the motorhome. Originally, the plan was just to sort of patch it up and get it working before uh, 
you know, before going on a trip. And the more I dug into it, the more I'm like, well, it just, it needs to be completely gutted and it needs to be done from the get-go. We're gonna get rid of that fridge and get a modern fridge that works better. We're gonna get rid of the stove top and the oven. We don't need the oven, so we're just gonna have a range. Um, the upper cabinetry here is going away. Uh, we don't like how it blocks the window, so we're just gonna get rid of that. And yeah, let's give you a tour of the back here. So you can see right there, that's where the water tank that we were just looking at, that's where that came out of. And unfortunately the floor is rotted under the water tank and also all back in there. So my original plan was to just sort of like cut it out in a shape and then slide it out the, uh, right here this is the, um, what is this, the, um, the generator compartment. So I was gonna take the generator out and just slide that plywood out through the generator compartment and slide a new one in uh, without having to, re to remove these fiberglass shells, but that's not an option. So like I said, I've just got to gut the whole thing. The whole interior has got to be gutted. I've got to fix like the cracks in the plastic and repaint that plastic so that it doesn't look so, I mean, look at how just icky it looks there. So it'll look a whole lot better when I'm done. But yep, there's uh, there's no shortcuts here. I'm definitely gonna have to, to just take it down to the bare frame and then redo it all. I'm going to be redoing the uh, the bathroom out, outer wall just because this stuff is heavy. It's particle board with this plastic, you know, veneer on it, just crappy. Down in there, you guys can see all the rat turds. Let's get a look at those. There you go, look at all those rat turds down in there. Right there, so gross. So, the uh, the motorhome definitely smells a little bit still, even with all the carpet and the and the furniture removed. It's not as bad as it was, but it's it's not good. So, uh, lots of work, and this is where it currently sits. One thing about these motorhomes is they're super wide, and uh, they're way wider than your normal uh, car that you're used to driving. So I ended up sideswiping something, and uh, I broke the. Uh, the awning off. You can see it's kind of twisted and the mount down here snapped off and then it kind of dragged up in an arc and punched a hole in the fiberglass right there. But um, you know that's all fixable. I could fix that. The thing is I don't I don't actually want an awning so uh, I'm just gonna remove it and then patch up my, my fiberglass. The whole rig needed a paint job anyway so uh, not that big of a tragedy just uh, kind of a pain in the butt. All right, I've got some more 3D printing for you guys. This is the original uh, running light cover from up on top. And you can see that I've got a bunch of 3D printed versions up there right now. So there's the original on the right and there's the 3D printed version on the left. Now, this is one of my uh, original prints. It wasn't quite sized right. I had to adjust it uh, before it mounted correctly. So you can see that one right there in the center at the top, that's, that's what you were just looking at. But on the left, is one of these. These are these teardrop ones. Now, this one I was strength testing, so I stood on it, and yeah, it will break if you stand on it. Um, it breaks along the layer lines, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, so these are quite functional, and I think they look much nicer uh, than the originals. The I like the teardrop. The mohawk shape is all right, but I like the teardrop shape better. And just to give you guys a quick insight uh, about how I made those, um, first I took pictures using a 100 millimeter lens uh, because that has very little distortion. So, you know, I don't have access to a, a real fancy and expensive scanning tool. So taking pictures is pretty easy for me to do. Um, so I took the pictures and then I bring them into my uh, software here and I line them up and I, you know, rotate them to get them all just right. Um, and when it's all said and done, I have sort of an orthogonal view from the front, the top and the side which I can then start tracing uh, just like this, you know, just draw the lines. And after I'm done drawing a bunch of lines from uh, all the different angles, what I have is a scaffolding, a three-dimensional wireframe uh, of the part. And once I have that, I can draw the surfaces. So there you see the, uh, the finished part. And if I do that top view, you can see it pretty well lines up with the uh, with the, uh, with the photos. And you can see here uh, all of the sort of iterations that I had to go through to get it right. And you know, up here, this was the final version of the Mohawk lens and that one is correct and fully functional. But you know, I didn't really like the design so that's when I started working on the teardrop. And the teardrop was a bit of a challenge because uh, it's a very smooth surface and you have to keep um, all of those surfaces tangent to each other so you don't have any creases. Um, so you can see here, 
This geometry is the mesh. That's what you need to export in order to 3D print it. And if we look at this one in a rendered view, we can just see how beautiful uh, that geometry is. I'm pretty proud of that. But uh, printing it is a bit of a challenge. You can see here uh, the part propped up at 45 degrees. And I do that because um, the, the, the print can stair step its way up at 45 degrees. So this whole edge here is a 45 degree angle. But at places where um, that angle is no longer 45 degrees, like let's say along this whole front edge of the part, um, it's almost just a flat ceiling, you need to support that. So you need to build a scaffolding underneath it. So that's what that material is. It's called support material. And here in this view, you can see uh, what it's actually looking like uh, as I'm printing it. So um, yeah, I can scroll down through the layers here. You can see layer one, just like a piece of paper, real thin, 0.2 millimeters thick. So actually the thickness of two pieces of paper, but still really thin. And then it just starts building the layers up. And layer by layer, 400 and some odd layers layer, 442 layers later, we, uh, we have a print. So you can see up here near the top, uh, I really get flat up here in the middle in the section there. Uh, it's just a very flat ceiling. You know, it's kind of bulbous still, but it's it's uh, it needs to be supported from underneath. So that's all that support material that you're seeing being printed here. It's all just so that we we get to that moment we are supporting the lens uh, at the top there. In contrast, the original design from the motorhome is actually a whole lot easier to print. Uh, you can see there's just a whole lot less support material that's needed because it's 45 degrees all the way up to that corner. Um, so if you're looking at it like this, you can see that's a 45 degree angle and that's definitely a 45 degree angle or closer to vertical and uh, You know just it can build itself all the way to the top there just like this uh, Without needing that support material, but I am printing uh, the teardrop version right now So let's take a look at that. Here is this very challenging print in action. You can see uh, the part back there I'm printing it with this matter hackers uh, translucent PETG and uh, that's part of the reason this is such a challenging print because PETG is very stringy. I just keep trying to dial this in until it works perfectly, but it is definitely the most difficult print I've ever done. So this one that more closely matches the original uh, lens shape is actually um, a lot easier to print, um, but I'm just stubborn and I really like the teardrop shape. And this is what the lens looks like in the dark with the light bulb shining through it.